they just as someone about who doesn't necessarily serve the Omnissiah, but someone who can appreciate them, you will not mm -hmm. be getting my legs today, as I will be replacing them with various things depending on which faction. Oh, oh, here. those are nice legs. Oh, yes. Can you hear the video? <laughs> Perfect time to pause. Nyum tab now? No, 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 nyum tab. Nyum tub. <laughs> nyum tub. That reminds me of like hot tubs. Oh, no. Perfect time to pause. Uh, let me know if you can hear. Uh, more context. Uh, yes. Can you hear him? Can you hear Bricky Chan? Bricky Chan, talk to us. And possible comedy to. Oh! Anime legs, let's go. I can see the puns with there, dude. I see what you did there. We react to him, not on what he's saying. <laughs> It's soft. Uh, speaking of soft, soft is not here. Okay, I'm gonna make it louder. Louder. Whatever the hell I am currently How doing. How about now? So, hello everybody. So. My name is Bricky. Hello. And this is going to be a long video and a large project that has been going on for quite some time. This is... I need two hands for this. This is every single Warhammer 40k race. Every single in one? Kind of a nutshell. Explain. In a nut. 40k Warhammer faction in a nutshell. Mm. You rate the leg 3 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, well, we're talking about the legs. So. And a little bit of explanation, a little bit of lore, a little bit of talking about the tabletop, but mostly lore, mm -hmm. what they're all about. About and war, also yes. A little bit of background for those of you who just have no clue what Warhammer yeah, 40, I don't know what it is. is. What now, is you it? see, Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000 is a universe people hear plenty of, but don't know a whole lot about. They see, oh, there's these dudes in big power armor with mm -hmm. chainsaw big swords, dudes? and they got these big old green orcs, and there's some bugs over there, and everyone Ooh, calls bugs. these guys weebs, and then there's these spiky bitches over here and I, I don't get it <laughs> wait don't spiky bitches let me see that oops that's not what i mean to do where's the spiky bitches armor with chainsaw swords and they got these big old green orcs and there's some bugs over there and everyone calls these guys weebs and then there's these oh spiky bitches where are the spikes oh the shoulders the shoulder pads have spikes look at those legs though three out of ten spiky bitches over here and I, I don't get it i don't understand where do i start well this spiky video bitches? is particularly for you or for, for me those of yes you who have a little bit of knowledge which are kind of curious about each of the yes, different uh, races it's for and me. factions in warhammer so overall the warhammer what universe is, this? is Vast oh, it's the universe. When it comes to lore and background, and each different faction is so different with the things that they believe in. And some are human, some are transhuman, uh -huh. like when they all have all these crazy ass oh, those electronics legs, on them. You've Seven got out of ten. aliens, and you've got the chaos factions. And ooh, ooh, ooh. What is this? Mm. Why does he have a bell, and why is his guts spilling you know what we'll find There's out so much to entail maybe he'll talk about it i decide it. to embark on this project to tell you what much more legs or the five. About <laughs> and what the warhammer universe is about as well to give at least a little bit of an intro to this extremely bloated but very very enjoyable world that i is it enjoyable partaken. though is so it i will be explaining mm. every single faction in the warhammer 40k universe at least all the factions you can play as and some smaller factions here and there i will all not right, be discussing right. absolutely it. everything in it because that is a little bit much and i'm not going to go too mega deep into the lore adeptus arbitis Adeptus Urbitis. But I thought it's everything. Okay, A fine. pretty solid overview of each of the different factions and have you learn a little bit about them. And we'll discuss a little bit of the tabletop as tabletop, well. Tabletop, yes. Curious about that. But for this episode entirely, we are discussing the Imperium of Man. Because Imperium that of Man. Because that takes a fat chunk of Warhammer lore. Oh, boo-hoo. Okay, what okay. Is Warhammer yeah, 40, what is it? Well, the 40,000 40, starts off is the year 40,000. The 41st millennium, that's where it takes place, is in the year 40,000, 41,000 AD. What? Did this happens in the future. Okay. 
AD 40,000. So it's gonna happen soon. I think. <laughs> How far are we to 40,000? <laughs> I don't know numbers. Yes, okay, You're in the future. More knowledgeable. Let me oh, read you okay, a okay, quote, okay. first of many quotes in this video. It is the 41st millennium. Uh -huh, For more than 100 millennium. years, the emperor has sat a mobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is wait, 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 wait. It says 100 centuries. Why did he say 100 years? 100 centuries is 100 times 100, no? Hmm. Okay. We're 38k away. 38k years away. All right. It says more than the hundred centuries. Dude, mm, suspicious. The master of mankind by the will of the dead gods, then, yep. and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. He is a uh -huh. rotting carcass, writhing invisibly with power. What are we talking about? Oh, the emperor. <laughs> Shit. He is the My brain. Lord of the Imperium, for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day, so that he may never truly die. All right. To be a man in such times is to be amongst untold billions. It is to untold live in the billions. coolest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of you gotta forget a lot of things, understanding, huh? for in the grim, dark future, there is only war. There uh -huh. is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. Ooh, thirsty gods. Everything Show me those thirsty, thirsty gods. And it blows fucking hard. Warhammer is mm -hmm. probably the blows most dark hard. and depressing universes ever. In f so it's an emo universe. All right. Emo universe, Warhammer 40k. Okay, I know more now. It happens in the future, number one. What I know so far, Warhammer happens in the future. Number two, it's an emo universe. Okay. Fiction. Or cool, at least cool, like, cool, like cool. top three. Everything is so absurdly horrible, destructive, emo, or though. overpowered that it all kind of <laughs> ends up canceling itself out. It's like Dota. War rages it's like across Dota. the galaxy. I don't play Dota. Interstellar travel is only possible due to sacrificing a thousand souls a day to a rotting a thousand carcass souls of a man a who you believe to be. That's the emperor. You're already lost. Yeah, I'm lost as well. Your god. Demonic gods and just demons tear open the fabric of reality. Do 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 do. Sorry, sorry for pausing. This guy has tentacles on the schmackles and on the face. What is this? Anyway, zoom in in hands. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Mmm, suspicious. Okay, Alan go on. on I'm sorry. Whim, other Xenos or even other humans end up killing each other in untold billions across the galaxy that was is a time of unending war slaughter and a bloodbath amongst everybody planets okay, okay. are deemed unrecoverable and are completely destroyed on a whim okay if planets are destroyed where do they live where do they get the souls if planets are destroyed if no one is living anywhere where do they get the 1,000 souls per day? I don't get it. Okay, continue. Everything sucks, but that's like the charm of it. See, everything uh -huh. in Warhammer the charm of is it. evil. But being in other planets, kind of okay. like humanity in its own right is a xenophobic, prejudice, and religious zealot group that kill each other just as much as they kill all of uh -huh. their enemies. But and they're like mid. Mid to high tier evil Mid on the evil high scale tier. of Warhammer. Who's Nobody's that guy? Good. No matter who you are, everyone is at some flavor, some color of evil. Whoever you pick, you are going to be the bad guy. But that's the fun of it. Because being the bad guy is badass. Villains are cool. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, villains, cool. villains are cool. cool True. Outfits. They got cool weapons. They got cool armies. Villains are cool, man. And when everyone is a villain, everyone is pretty cool. That's what makes this so charming, is that everyone can be the bad guy wait if everyone is the villain how do you know they're a villain if there's no hero to compare them to hmm. 
Okay. Did he lose his lower part? Yes. Probably. That guy. They make souls. They make 1,000 souls and then consume them and then make 1,000 again and then consume them every day. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. So let's start off talking about the main bad guy. Yes. Quote, quote, the Imperium of Man. Imperium of Man. The Imperium of Man is the main empire of the human race. All of humanity is under this one flag called the Imperium. And about 10,000 years ago, there was a uh -huh, man. Uh -huh. He was the Emperor, the Emperor of Man. Wait, 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 wait. 10,000 years ago, from the 40,000 in the future, so it's like 30,000. Or 10,000 years ago from now. Hmm. Yes? <laughs> Mankind, a 10 foot tall psychic demigod <laughs> right. who led humanity across the stars to colonize tons and tons of worlds, 30, create right. superhuman soldiers, and really bring humanity into a new age. This man, the Emperor Who is he? of Mankind, was oh, a psyker. Emperor. A psyker is like a psyker. magician of sorts. In the world of 40k, there is the warp, the immaterium, kind of like the hell, warp. but sort of like a purgatory dimension of hell. And a psyker is someone who can take that power and manifest it through their mind to use it to do stuff. Well, like witchcraft stuff, magician uh -huh. stuff, spells, and lots of other things, but we don't want to get too into that. The Emperor, the warp. big boy psyker, top tier A. He takes power from the warp. Why? What? What did, what did he say? Did he say the warp is the magic or what? I'm confused. Kind of like hell, but sort of like a purgatory dimension of hell. And a psyker is someone who can take that power and manifest it through their mind. So the warp to is power? To do stuff. Well, like witchcraft stuff, magician stuff, uh. spells, and lots of other things, but we don't want to get too into that. The emperor, big boy psyker. Hot Big boy, okay. A plus, maybe even S. Now the emperor created a bunch of sons. Yes, created a bunch created. of sons. Created primarchs. He created twenty. <gasps> but how did he create them? My toes is. I need explanations, dude. Tell me how did he create the sons? 18, 18 Primarchs to have them lead all of the different legions of humanity to the different stars and seed. plans to help colonize and bring it out. These do do do. Did you see that? That that looks like um. Humanity to the different stars. Dark Souls guy. What's his name? The bald guy. Patches. Stars and. I didn't know Patches is uh, the Emperor's son. Plans to help colonize and bring it out. These Primarchs are basically like little versions of the Emperor. Not all of them are Psychers, but a lot of them are very, very powerful, and they lead his special Space Marine legions. Then this big clusterfuck happened called yes. the Horus Heresy, where the Emperor's favorite son, the Primarch, Horus, ended up joining Chaos and leading nine other, well, I guess eight, nine of the 18, half, half mm -hmm. of his Primarchs Horus. directly to Earth to fight down the Emperor himself. Now, if what does Horus mean? Is, remember what I mentioned earlier? The warp, that immaterium, the hellish place? Yes. In there relies the four Chaos Gods. Imagine like... I need to know about the fourth one. I hope she... I hope he talks about the fourth one. Ooh. Ooh. Satan and three other Satans. The yes. warp being kind of evil, those chaos gods, that's the reason. Dude! Oh! Chaos god number four? What's your number? And so those chaos gods manipulated Horus, and then Horus helped manipulate all eight other Primarchs to uh -huh. lead this giant the Primarchs, coup yes. directly on the Emperor on Earth. So and they fucked up shit. After yes. this huge civil war, Horus died, but not before brutally wounding the Emperor. And right at the end of his life, they put the Emperor on this large <laughs> golden throne on Earth in which he is now alive. Uh... Just yes. barely, but slowly rotting away, powering something called the Astronomicon. So long Astronomicon. as he stays alive and is fed a thousand people 
Oh day. yes, yes, I remember that part. It's like the North Star. If you want to do interstellar Astronomicon. travel in 40k, you need to pass through that demonic warp I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. But Guy how do you know where you Well, the Emperor is there putting a nice little navigator right there. He helps navigate you to know where you're going. If you want to go from Earth to some crazy solar system across the way, you need to go through that warp and then you need to know where you're going. Go through there and pop your way out. It's like uh, doing nether travel in, in Minecraft. Yes. So you can shorten the distance between going uh, to areas. So long yes, as the yes. Emperor is alive I understand that part. and being fed a thousand people a day to stay alive, you can do that. The moment he dies... Interstellar travel's gone. For okay, okay. So if he doesn't eat 1,000 a day, what if he only has like 999? It's like, oh no, we only have 999 souls today, sir. Is is he gonna die instantly or what? Uh, hmm. I, I guess if there's like only 999 souls, he's gonna eat the messenger soul. Because the messenger is gonna be there. It's like, sir, we only have nineteen nine nine nine, and the, the the people will be like, well, we have one thousand now. It's you. There's always more bodies. We don't know if he'll die or not. Oh, <gasps> I need to know. Okay. All of humanity. You're so boned. Now, since the Horus Heresy 10,000 years ago, the Imperium has fallen from grace substantially. All uh -huh. technology has started to dwindle and die. There is now giant fundamental religious extremists that now believe the Emperor of Mankind was a deity. A true a deity. living deity. God, is he not? Which is probably the last thing the oh, he's, he's would man. have wanted to be remembered for. So now you have this thing called the Ecclesiarchy, which Ecclesiarchy. is this giant church entirely devoted to spreading the good word of the emperor. He is now the holy emperor god. The god emperor Wait. of Wait! Who's that? Who's this? Why does he have an extra skull there? Hmm. Kind and all of the Imperium has taken up worshiping him oh, to baby. the fullest extent and killing anything that isn't humanity in his name. The Imperium mm -hmm. has this futuristic gothic tone to it and a hefty religious zealotry to them. If you think anything zealotry. against the Emperor, that's heresy and you deserve to die. That is called being a heretic. Mm -hmm. Heretics die in 40k. There is no uh -huh. such thing as freedom of religion. There is no such thing as freedom of speech, so long as you are against the emperor. There is no such thing as any kind of tolerance. Everyone is a religious zealot. Some more than others, but Who's that no guy? what, you preach in that good word. So right now, Everyone in humanity the is most trying religious to expand person. their empire across the stars. If you are a heretic, someone who doesn't believe in the emperor, you are deserving of death. If you believe in the chaos gods, you are also a heretic and you deserve death. But wait, he, he showed the chaos gods? And... I want to believe in the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If you are an alien race of Bro? any kind, you are a filthy Xenos and you deserve Come death to the dark as side. well. So long as the murder continues and humanity expands, the Imperium of Man is very, very happy. Uh -huh. However, the largest fighting force of this Imperium is my personal favorite faction. And the first faction we will discuss, the Astro Militarum, or also known as the, the Imperial what? Guard. Astro Militarum. You finished. Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard is the main fighting force of the Imperium, and in a world of horrifying creatures, galactic monstrosities, the literal demons themselves breaking through the fabric of time to kill you, the Imperial Guard are untold billions of untold regular billions. men and women wearing modern day like flak armor with a laser yes. rifle. This is the humble las gun, las gun. the main Ooh. weapon of the Imperial Guard. It fires superheated plasma lasers at an extremely fast fire rate. It is reliable, never jams. It can blow it off never jams. Amazing. giant holes in concrete. It is overall an extremely devastating weapon in modern day. Mm -hmm, it in is modern day. one of the weakest in the 40k universe. Yeah, it's a, a, flash a laser light. rifle that never jams, it could blow off limbs. One of the weakest weapons. That's uh -huh. the one we're in right now. But who cares? Because the Imperial Guard has, in each battle, 500,000 of these men and women. 
30,000 large armored tanks, 10,000 artillery batteries. How did he know? How did they know that there's 30,000 things and 10,000 tanks? Okay. Imperial Guard Never mind. wins through sheer numbers and firepower. Sheer they numbers. Have this World War One, World War Two style aesthetic with legions of guardsmen as mm -hmm. well as high company commanders and generals on the field along with them and multiple kinds of troops. Laser! A normal Imperial Guard battle starts Laser off gun. with artillery, long lines of artillery cracking the crust of the planet underneath the enemy's feet. And as this barrage continues, hundreds of thousands of guardsmen see a sea of guardsmen see a sea. forward, firing and charging at everything possible while the planet rumbles as tanks roll up behind them. Oh. Gunships block out the sun and tanks block out the dirt with the steps and hoof prints of millions of guardsmen. It is through millions of and guardsmen. sheer sundering firepower. They are the first and last line of defense for the Imperium and make up a huge bulk of the battles. The Imperial Guard is also made up of Who are they different fighting? kinds of regiments. The Katachin jungle Ooh. fighters live in a death <laughs> world. Uh, why does he why does he have a shot? <laughs> that it's more hospitable than almost any firefight they'll ever get into. <laughs> so they just have this oh my god looking Jeez. That's like a, an album cover right there. That's amazing. Or maybe not, like an older game cover, you know? Aha. Uh -huh. Giant knife. Hello, Nana. That muscle man should be my religion. Oh my god, the muscles though. Jeez. Rambo predator looking sons of welcome, bitches welcome. where nothing is anywhere near as scary as a simple knight on their home planet. You have the Valhallen winter soldiers who haven't felt their toes in 300 years. The Mordian iron guard who are- Who haven't what their toes? What? What did they do with their toes? Soldiers who haven't felt their toes. Oh, haven't felt their toes. Ah, haven't felt their toes. In 300 yes. years, the Mordian Iron Guard, who are more interested in making their shoes shine than actually Ooh. fighting a battle. And then, of course, the big one, the Cadians from Cadia. Um, I thought he's gonna explain the factions. So, is this just one faction? Oh, Imperial Guard. Imperial Guard is one faction? What? Wait. What is the faction here? Is the faction humans? Uh, forgot already. Uh, I guess he's talking about the humans right now. So one faction is humans. And he's just talking about what is... What contributes the humans? Hmm. Imperium is the faction. Imperium is the faction. But I thought the Imperium is where the Emperor is. Uh, I don't it's a place. I don't know what harm stuff. I'm just here to vibe. Ah, Hope you enjoy the vibes. It has sub-factions. Okay, okay. Imperium. Alright. <laughs> the biggest export of Guardsmen in the entirety of the Imperium. You will fire your first gun at five. You will disassemble and reassemble it at 10. You will have pounding artillery drills day in and day out at 15. And you'll fight your first Swarm Lord at 16. Ooh, swarm and if Lord. you mention Kadia, you will burst into an unrelenting amount of tears and sadness like I do daily. To quote, I have at my command an entire battle group of the Imperial Guard. 50 regiments, including specialized drop troops, stealthers, mechanized formations, armored companies, combat engineers, and mobile artillery. Over half mm -hmm. a million fighting men and 30,000 tanks and artillery pieces are mine to command. Emperor, show mercy to the fool that stands against me, for I shall not. The Imperial Guard okay. are my personal favorite faction in 40k. Imperial They're the army I guard. the most, the ones I enjoy playing the most, and the one I enjoy in the lore sense a lot. There's something about just a regular man with a laser rifle being told to charge the horrors regular of this man. universe and willingly doing so for his god emperor. It's just... Regular poetic. man with flashlight. It's poetic. Sorry, sorry. I paused at the, the wrong main time. Imperial Guard tactics pretty well. Large amounts of artillery that doesn't require a line of sight. Lots of tanks. Tons of infantry. Drop troops and gunships. Overall, they're 
pretty similar to how they sound, though a little bit expensive to collect, unfortunately. And they don't hit a lot. They have a bit of a bad aim, but you don't really care because you're just drowning them in shots. However, uh -huh. you want more accurate fire and specialization? We can move on to talk about space marines. Space marines? The angels, angels of, of death, death are up next. Space wait, marines wait. are... They're still humans, yes? They're part of the human imperium... Schmeckles. Okay. I, 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 I would assume so. Because he didn't say anything yet about moving on to a different faction so i guess they're humans all right superhumans mm -hmm. genetically super humans. engineered super soldiers and superhumans they're given extra organs their yeah. skin tissue is toughened their bones are stronger they're taller than the average person they're pretty massive people and these are the specialized super soldiers that carry out a lot of the more specific tasks for the imperium and there's tons of legions of them in fact and they have big shoulder pads. Is he gonna mention the big shoulder pads or no? In fact, there's one per Primarch. Each Primarch, per Primarch son, as yes. I mentioned before, uh, yeah, I remember that oversees part. their legion of space marines. The genetic upgrade they get is based on the genes of said Primarch. It's something called a gene seed. That's what gene brings seed, them up to the this, seeds. Like, superhuman level. As stated, each Primarch has their own legion. A uh, robot girly man has the Ultramarines, Jagatai Khan has the White Scars, a Rogel Dorn has the Imperial Fists, Corvus Korax has the Raven Guard, and there's a whole bunch of other side sections that are also extremely interesting and have a little bit more of a twist on the average Space Marines, which we will discuss yes. in a bit. Humorously enough, I don't have a whole lot to say about Space Marines. They're superhumanly fast. In, in fact, it's been said that nothing that large should move that quick. These men in power armor are moving at blazing fast speeds, their reflexes are faster, their skin is tougher they are overall just extremely powerful soldiers in fact where they differ it comes down to which space marine legion we're talking about for instance the ultramarines done by ultramarine Gilliman, Gill 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 are the main blue boys strong in the blue every boys way, the jack of all trades kind of group that are a little bit too strong and that's a lore problem but mm, uh, the white scars by jagatai khan are all about speed white freaks, scars. Go fast. we're talking attack bikes we're talking Ooh. land speeders you want to uh, uh, dude, that's pretty cool. They have attack bikes. I want an attack bike. That's pretty cool. <laughs> attack bike! Everything in this video is the Imperium. Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. In quick, you want to hit them hard. You want them to be swarming around like buzz flies. Buzz, buzz, saw, buzz saws. With the speed of buzz saws. What? Fuck you, Pale King. Salamanders love fire. Fire in the forge, fire in battle. Flamers, melta guns, multi meltas. Just so long as something can be burning, that's big. And they're also actually some of the nicest of the space marines. A lot of space marines have this kind of like holier than thou thing because of their genetic strength. Uh -huh, uh -huh. However, the salamanders tend to put human lives Salamander. above the lives of themselves, which is actually rather rare. They're also all black, but not like just regular black, like like 2 a.m. line at a white castle black like they have a charcoal dark ashy exterior and blazing salamander red eyes. apparently something about living on their home planet of nocturne which i don't know if that makes much sense but who cares this is like fantasy land anyway overall salamanders are actually one of my personal favorite legions because they're just really cool they're fun to play as because of all their flamer weapons and they have a nice like flamethrower heartwarming lore as opposed to being super they, evil like everyone else. They're else's. using oh a flamethrower and they're heartwarming. Dude, they're heartwarming because they have a flamethrower. They're gonna warm your heart. Warmer than uh, you would expect. Because <laughs> it's a flamethrower. So it's gonna warm you. Yes more heartwarming lore <laughs> as opposed to being super evil like god. everyone else is oh my god we're not even a quarter of the way through the space marine legions uh imperial fists believe in the power of the siege and defensive positions uh you cannot stop guards, me. master of stealth and sabotage while having burn helmets iron hands masters of machines and vehicles while being really goddamn iron good hand. at being sold on ebay after one nerf space wolves uh vikings Ooh, space and wolves. wolves and tons of wolves that's and, cool and axes battle axes fur everywhere space wolves mm. like, Angry, big teeth. Ah. 
blood angels, the genetic defect oh, that to is make cool. them want to drink blood and go crazy called the red thirst. They have cupid wings and stuff, which is a little bit strange, and they are all super gay for Sanguinius. Dark Who's Sanguinius? and stuff it's a little bit strange and they are all super gay wouldn't you be gay for sanguinous look at him look at him look at those lips there's a heart on his armor there's a big cat on his shoulder I mean wouldn't you their primary is sanguinous what's sanguinous mm. blonde Yes. I relate to this guy because I'm also blind. Anyway, some going news. Dark Angels are old school knights Dark and inner circle theme and What? What does it mean? I don't understand this meme, dude. Are you a heretic? Me? No, never. Once in blue, 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 I know. Death Watch, a fancy pantsy anti Xenos group that nobody plays because Death Watch and they look cool though, but no one, no one yeah, plays they them. Look really I don't cool. know about Death Watch. They're, they're, they're there though. Black Templars, for the people who, if you haven't prayed at least three times a day, you're going to start praying out that airlock. And I'm sure there's some other chapters I may have missed as well, like Crimson How Fist. How do they and know stuff, you didn't pray? Those are the main ones right here. Here, here. Quote from mm -hmm. the Emperor himself. They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give of themselves to me. Like clay I shall mold them, and in the furnace of war I shall forge them. They shall be of iron will and steely sinew. In sinew. great armor I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons shall they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease, no sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies, and machines that no foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are my defenders of humanity. They are my space marines, and they shall know no fear. And on the tabletop, they fuck. Oh, they fuck hard. As of making uh -huh. this video, space marines are laughably strong. That might change at some point, but overall, space They're marines strong. have the, it's like okay, a Swiss okay. army knife. A tool for anything you need, except it's like a gold-plated Swiss Army knife. It is extremely strong. If you are actually getting into the tabletop of Warhammer, Space Marines are a great start. Also, whatever gameplay style you have, whether you want to be sit back with long range and heavy weaponry, go fast and run in, or even just full melee, all of these options are totally there for you. Space Marines are super badass, but unfortunately, it's time we start praying to our new god, the 2011 Honda Civic. So is it any wonder people are afraid? Adeptus Mechanicus. Well, this is what I know, right? It seems like the Space Marines are the most popular ones. Or maybe that's just me, because I don't know anything about this thing. I don't know anything about Warhammer, but I've seen those Space Marines, they... They seem popular. Those big shoulder pads. Of course they are. Are they the most popular ones? Like, if you ask all the people who are into this hobby, it's gonna be the most popular one, no? Of course they are. They're space marines. Alright, alright. Big shoulder pads! Go! Okay, Adeptus Mechanicus. This is a different one. Surely. Surely the most popular. Adeptus Mechanicus. Right, technology. Right. technology. The Adeptus Mechanicus. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a technophile cult on technophile. Mars. Now, these people are a little bit weird because they don't Just actually a bit. really believe in the Emperor of Mankind. And you might think, oh, whoa, whoa, Wait, whoa. Wait, that's Percy, heretical. That sounds like some heresy. A little bit. They believe in the Emperor. They believe in his power but they don't pray to him. They pray to something called the Omnissiah. And the Omnissiah is the this kind of machine god that they believe permeates in all machines. Omnissiah. And if you think, well, wait a minute, they believe in a different god as well? That sounds like super heresy. Well, yes-ish, but they also make all your guns and they uh, make all your tanks. So they make an exception for people who make the guns, of course. Because if they don't make an exception, who's gonna give them the guns? And the tanks? Okay, okay.
they make an exception to Harry, saying, hmm. Hmm. And they make everything that you have? So you can't really tell them to fuck off? Because you're not gonna win nothing if you don't got stuff to shoot people with. See, their omnisaya at least makes sense from their standpoint. So smart. They believe it's a deity that permeates through all machines. Your Honda Civic, your standard bolt gun, your Dune Strider Walker, your giant mechs, your huge ships. The Omnisaya is present through all. And the only reason your stuff works is because the machine spirit in it says it works. If you. Really? What if it's a machine that's not made by them? Does it, so does that mean that all the machines they make have soul and they will you they will it so it works huh there's a soul in the machine and stuff like that hmm all right if you want your gun to work your tank to run you must pray to it and i mean what happens stop. if you don't pray you need to start chanting in high gothic you oh, need hello, Ram. incense you need to sit on your knees and pray to that car you gotta pray to your machine you gotta pray to your gun so it works i mean that also happens in real life when something doesn't work you kind of pray that it will work but you don't necessarily pray to it just pray to something. I guess you pray to the Omnisaya. What? Omnisaya? Omnisaya? I don't know, man. They don't make machines. Inventing something is heresy. But they are exception. They are exempted from the heresy thing because they make them. I thought we established that they are accepted, exempted from it. You can't invent anything? It's bad? Alright, alright. You need to rub oil on your robes? And you rub oil? You gotta rub oil on yourself to make things work while praying? Alright. You go, a homina, 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 homina. Full stop. If you want your damn thing to work, if you want your gun to fire, you need to do that. They are very bizarre and they actually have a bit of a point. Because it's obviously working, and if it's you look working, at them, it just works. I don't know how that works. So they obviously know something about what they're doing. The most notable member of the Adidas Mechanicus is Arch Magos, Magos, whatever, Belisarius. This art looks cool. Sorry, I paused at the wrong time. This art looks cool. I just want to say, oh, Belisarius. What? Arch Magos, Magos, whatever. Belisarius call. Look at this, look at this dude. Barsa this dude. I didn't understand yeah. that. That this is the group we're talking about. These are these weirdos. Here. The Omnisian Creed. The 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 Credo Credo. Eh. Omnisia. There is no truth in flesh, only betrayal. There is no strength in flesh, only weakness. There is no constancy in flesh, only decay. There is no certainty in flesh but death. Flesh is weakness. Oh, that's how you flesh is that's how that's how you spell omnisaya. Oh my god. Is that a real word? Yeah, it's probably a fictional word. They replicate what humans of old already invented. Belly Sarus coal. Coal. Belisarus coal. That that art is sick. Okay, that's how you spell omnisaya. No certainty cool. in flesh, but death. Flesh is weakness, flesh is death. The Omnisaya is the god of the machines. And if you wish to be whole, if you wish to be holy, if you wish to give unto him, you must saw down your limbs and remove oh. your organs and replace them with mechanical parts because that is what he wants. And that is how you will become enlightened. Hard. You would be enlightened if you saw off your limbs? Sheesh, all right. That's brutal. Technophiles mixed with religious extremism. 
Dentus Mechanicus. Now for their army side of things, they are with the Skatari. The Skatari operate with very the bizarre what? weaponry and lots of different <laughs> kinds of vehicles, tanks, and even people in between. They're very weird, uh, but they have extremely wacky and, and enjoyable, and in fact, quite effective both in the real game and in the lore, weaponry and gear. Overall, as an army on the tabletop, they're very weird and have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of different shenanigans. They look but really if cool. you like kind of that quirky, wacky techno thing, I'd give them a pickup. Hell, they're so paranoid. I, I gotta keep going. They're so paranoid and crazy. These dune striders you see right here, one guy was able to make them work. One guy and he died. And they're so scared they'll never work again that they keep them on and they never turn them off. And they run around in a circle the whole time until they need them and then they corral it and they go into battle. What? Yep. The Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, if you want to talk about. That's faith, relatable though. though. Oh, oh. Being paranoid. Let's talk about the Sisters of Battle. <laughs> a simp has sisters of Battle! Sororitas! The Sisters of Battle of the Adeptus Sororitas, if that's how I pronounce it correctly, is an all-female group of battle sisters going through the Ecclesiarchy section of the The Imperium. what? The Ecclesiarchy is, of course, the church. This the is, church, yes, yeah, the church. This is a private army of the church, which is scary. And it is. The sisters are an extremely zealotous force, and they take this to a full extreme. They believe in three main things, faith, martyrdom, and fire. Through the bolter, the flamer, and the melta, the sisters of battle are well, extremely really cool. potent at taking out chaos and heretics, mainly heretics, because as they are a fighting section of the Ecclesiarchy Church, that's the big thing they want to kill. Any form of heretic will face the Emperor's justice through those three main weapons, the Bolter, the Flamer, and the Melta, and mm, they will do so flamer. with extreme prejudice. Literally. They are the closest things we have to nuns in space. And I'm talking- Nuns in space, oh! Nuns. They carry holy fire on their backs. They have holy like books and sigils all across their armor. Their main battle tank is a fucking pipe organ missile launcher. They have small babies, babies. that they have like removed their brain capacity to make them little servant cherubs to fly around and give them ammunition and shit. Where did they get the babies? What the hell? Look at those babies. Oh no. Look at those ugly babies. They drop churches from low orbit as mini drop pods <laughs> onto battles. They drop churches into battles and they blare war hymns and holy music from their frigates in low atmosphere and shower holy water across the battlefield. Ooh. These are the people holy shower. you are dealing with and they're fucking awesome. They can literally stave off demons. Oh, on that's the a demon. Tabletop because their faith is that strong. Remember the warp, the demons from the warp? Oh well, yeah, warp yeah, of course. Also I manifest remember. in your mind. All of your emotions, negative and positive, go through the warp. It's the immaterium, the place of all things. So if you are that mentally fortified, that mentally strong, you can stave off horrifying demons. And all these girls, oh, not a crack. Not a crack in that mental armor. Now, as much as a meme as they are, and as much as their models look a lot like Ongo, Ongo Gabloglian, yeah, which I can't unsee anymore. I gotta say, I love their design. I think they're extremely cool. They're another army that I'm currently collecting. Oh, they all have they white hair, They just released a whole new line of figures very recently, and they look wonderful. Everything from Celestine, the living, literally undying saint, from the triumph of Saint Catherine, <laughs> which is literally a funeral procession as a model. Those organ tanks I mentioned earlier. This shit is the most over-the-top badassery in a lot of the Warhammer universe, and goddamn it, is it over the top. But Sisters of Battle are so cool. While I'm a guardsman at heart, oh, this is such a cool faction. By Bolter Shell, Flamer Burst, Bolter. and Melta Blast, 
the mutant, the heretic, and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. So it has been for five millennia, so shall it be until the end of time. Cleanse of their sin of existence? Existing is a sin in this place. Oh my god, sheesh, bro. You're not allowed to exist as a sin. Hmm. <laughs> Oh no, the Holy Sister is gonna bonk if we exist. Alright, alright. And speaking of burning demons. I can see. Grey Knights. I can fight. The Grey Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. The Grey Knights are a super secretive and much more old school look at power armored knights. They're not space marines? They are all psychers. All of them have that crazy Psychers. space magic magician shit. For mm -hmm. every 100,000 guardsmen, there's one Grey Knight. For every 10,000 Sisters of Battle, there's one Grey Knight. For every 1,000 Space Marines, there's one Grey Knight. Uh. Grey Knights are the strongest of the strong, both in mental will and absolute just strength. Oh, they're a higher rank than the Space Marines. All right, all right. Oh, they're also big. Oh, okay, okay. These are space marines that are all high level psychers. psychers. All of them able to specifically Psych. do one goal, and that is kill demons. The emperor believed that the demons. demons and chaos were the number one threat to the imperium, and he probably is right. However, this group is entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet, or I guess the moon of Titan in the Soul System, the Grey Knights are thrown in through this extremely system? rigorous right. training and are as clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level psychers. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. They're one of the focused. characters one of my favorite Ooh. characters is named Castellan Crow. He has a demon Castellan? blade, the black blade of Mahamahama, and he has to have the what? it on him. <laughs> the black blade of what? <laughs> Same. What? One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castellan Crow. He has a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama. Mahamahama. <laughs> I don't know how many syllables that is. Maha Maha ma. Solar system is our solar system, yes. The Maha Maha ma. Yeah, okay, okay. And he has to have it on him because it tempts the everyone black nearby, blade. constantly beckoning them. Use my power. Use my strength. Suck my penis. Whatever oh! The... Oh my. That sword is powerful. <laughs> Possibility. And so it's he luck. has to keep it's it luck. on him mm -hmm. all the time as this thing whispers to him. The maha maha ma. And he has to stave it off forever, being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield, because anyone who gets too close to it might be tempted a little too hard. He is that pure of heart and mind. And all the characters in the Grey Knights are basically like that. The only I issue is that um, Grey Knights have a scorched earth policy. You know, Scorch our paws, eh? If they're fighting demons, demons corrupt and make people crazy. So if I'm a guardsman and I'm fighting demons and the Grey Knights arrive and they kill all the demons... Interspecies review or something. I'm a risk. And so guess who's not making it out of there? On the tabletop, they're very strike fast, strike hard kind of people. They teleport all around the place. They are Ooh. fast strike groups, small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only have so many characters, but with it, you get in there, you're very tough, very tanky, you hit really hard and you try to bounce around the battlefield quickly, but you don't have numbers. And so every dead gray knight hits really damn hard. They're fun though, if you like that kind of uh, fast striking kind of army. Oh, and also uh, Kaldor Drago is a thing. We're not even gonna get into Kaldor Drago. All right, that is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. What is it? I am the hammer. I am the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. So is, is this the war hammer they're talking about? He says he's the hammer. Is he the war hammer? <gasps> now we know what it means. 
Okay. Maybe I don't need to watch the rest of it. I know which which the Warhammer now. That guy who says he's the hammer. <laughs> hello, Vitashi. Hello, hello. Welcome. He's the hammer. Okay. We figured it out. This is the hammer. This is Warhammer 40k. This guy right here. Whoever that is. Grey the Knights Grey Knight. Are pretty hardcore. They are as holy as you can get for a Space Marine. If you like Space Marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier, Grey Knights. Now, if you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights. Do you like gigantic walkers Ooh, the size that's huge. of homes or medium-sized buildings? Is there a person in there? Is this thing? Uh, is it like a Gundam and there's a person in there or this is the person? Hmm. Or maybe it's a person but he has augmentation. He's augmented by machine parts. Huh. That's the question. I feel like it's easier to understand if there is a person piloting it and it's like a Gundam. In the small ones, a person. In the big ones, a lot of people. Some are like cities almost. There's a lot of people here. Oh. So it is like a Gundam. Okay, okay. Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them per turn? Do you want a gigantic old school knight noble house style of walkers with giant chainsaw arms? Then you yes. got Imperial Knights. Chainsaw Imperial arms. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about. Sign me up. Because they're just gigantic walkers. But they have this old school like house feel to them. Like literally like they're houses. Each Imperial Knight comes from a house and each of them act in their own special way these behemoth of walkers also Ooh, destroy what is that? everything in their what path, are they fighting that's full cool swaths of squads in a couple shots stepping on legions of troops like these things do not mess around looks like and evangelion look so cool imperial knights angels and, and chaos knights, actually, for that matter don't have a whole lot to discuss they're just super big heavy walkers and they look different depending on your house or chaos god you currently believe even. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer. And if you want to collect them, go to town. They make for a great painting project, too. Okay. Imperial Knight is controlled by a lot of people. Okay, okay, got him. Got it, got it. It's a big Gundam. There's a lot of people in it. And it's strong. Okay. More back down to Earth. Let's talk something about a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little more gold gold if Cost guardsmen told this? are regular soldiers space marines are super soldiers gray knights are super super soldiers super the super adeptus custodies are super soldiers cubed the adeptus custodies are the super third super major super army i own I, I know three armies i know i i, I got carried away okay but that, that's all i only have three okay it's... for now <sighs> They are our final brand of Space Marines, but these ones are super special. Okay. okay. If a guard okay. is six foot, a Space Marine is seven feet, a Custodian is eight feet. These are the giant defenders of Holy Terra, which is also Earth. Earth is Terra, Earth is Terra, uh -huh. themselves. These are the people that literally guard the Emperor's throne room. Hence, Custod Wait, so the Emperor's in Earth? <gasps> in the year 14. T thousand, the Earth still exists and the Emperor is on Earth. Oh, he never mentioned that before. I thought this is like a different uh, place. I thought it's like a weird ass planet out there. Because he was talking about the warp and the demons and I'm like, maybe they're in a different planet. It's still Earth. Okay. Cody's. These boys protect the Emperor's throne room at all times and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans hand brought crafted. up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. Elaborate. What do you mean handcrafted? I think from a tube. These behemoth. Test tube babies. So the golden 
knights are attached to bebes, handcrafted. Imperium is made out of millions of different worlds, but Earth is the centerpiece. Hmm. They smooch together a lot of worlds, and Earth is at the center of it. Okay. Myth of men are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall, and functionally immortal. They stand still, spear in hand, for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat watching over the throne room and every other area of holy terra for their entire <coughs> purpose in life and oh my lord are they terrifying these custodians <coughs> space marines to shame if you liked your super soldiers these are your super mega soldiers one of these men can take on probably three space marines and most likely win there are many different groups of custodians as well like Ooh, the solar watch so or there's also one of my personal favorite the aquilin shield the aquilin shield go out to seemingly unimportant individuals and protect them because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in their lives for instance let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall golden god because that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something of that nature the custodians yes. work in mysterious ways and are almost always outnumbered but never outmatched the everyone is a test of baby <laughs> everyone in this place is a test of baby wait how about the first one he discussed the imperial guards aren't they real humans hmm. these people are pretty horrifying both on the tabletop as well as in the lore there are very few of them, however, and there's actually an extremely small amount of them. But that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war gear this strong, weapons this powerful. Everyone except the human, the normal humans, and sometimes even they are tested babies as well. Aww, everyone's tested baby. Well, in training this good, and the custodians have all three of it. For 100 years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue, but always ready. Always, always ready. Ooh. Dangers unseen. He's always Days, ready. Months, like SpongeBob. Years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond those walls, yet within, little moved and nothing changed. For 100 years, I did not but wait. Yet had any threat appeared, I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100 years, I stood my watch, and as it ends, I can tell you this, patience is a weapon. The custodians are the top dogs of the Imperium, dog. and they hurt just that same way. Though I do want to discuss a little bit about the oh, Sisters of Silence movies. before we get out of here, because the Sisters of Silence I also have a few of, and they're really fun, but they don't get enough attention. These That hairstyle is interesting. It's like a um, helmet, you know? Those helmets with this thing, with hair. Except there's no helmet, only hair. This kind of bald plume ladies are a whole group <laughs> kind of, of bald. Well, she's bald. Blanks. We'll be referring to them as blanks from now on. So as every mind is somewhat connected to the warp, these blanks are a genetic mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily. Because of that mind suppression, normal people feel this weird, like, uncomfortable nature when around them. When a sister of silence mind walks suppression. past them, you feel ill. You feel just uncomfortable and strange. So most of them don't actually live past childhood because once they are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed or something at a very young age because they just emit a horrifying aura. These ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, none of the custodians are psychers, so they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds of psychic phenomena. These sisters are extremely specialized in it, all of them taking a vow of psychers. silence as they don't speak, hence the term such as a silence, but they communicate through hand gestures and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue... They communicate through hand gestures. Wait, they are, they are psychers though. Don't they communicate through psych? Through the mind? Huh? Uh, is that joke appropriate? Silence. Um. But they communicate through hand gestures <laughs> and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely 
adept at dealing with them thanks to their blank gene. They normally work a lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats, but they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model for them, which is very uh -huh. unfortunate. I hope they'll get something new soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore, but hopefully we'll get there soon. But if we're talking about blanks, let's talk assassins. Ooh. Assassinoro. It's been a long video. We're about to round it out. We got this and one more human thing and then we're done. The assassins okay, okay. though, the officio assassinorum. Oh boy, these people are deadly. Yeah, they're called assassins. They should be, but oh man. These people will mess you up. So these are from the Officio Assassinorum, a very special organization, and they are handpicked by the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum from the, shit, what was it called? Scola Progenium. It's basically an Progenium. Your parents got murdered by demons or something. You get sent to this and you get trained to be whatever. Uh, Tempestus Drop Troop, uh, an Inquisitor, maybe even. Uh, maybe you get a uh, blank G. It's an orphanage. The Sisters of Silence, or sometimes you just disappear. When the, the assassins are orphans, huh? Official assassinarium. A blank gene and you get thrown into the sister's silence or sometimes you just disappear when you are taken however you go to one of four temples because the assassinorum works in the temple style of things yes. these temples are the vindicare caluxus calidus and eversore temples we'll start with the vindicare i'm far away i've been sitting here for three weeks the Vindicare Temple what? is the main sniper-based temple. Gigantic sniper rifles for all these assassins. Their whole point is to be able to be in a spot and sit there, eye sniper. and scope for weeks, waiting for their perfect target, taking people out from literal what miles. If, what if they got a poop? I guess they just poop on the spot. Do they need to poop, the assassins? Are they human? He didn't say. I, I'll just assume they're human. Wait, everyone here is human. So what if he got a poop? And it's just waiting for the target. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> go on. Away after extremely long time periods. The Vindicare Temple is about precise perfect aim. There have been reports of Vindicares being able to single out particular body parts from over two, three miles away. Temples in the head, the jugular, for instance. Jugular. And been sitting there after weeks. And when they're ready, take that shot. Time is done. Maybe they have a zipper on their bodysuit. Yeah, maybe they got a butt zipper, especially for that purpose. Packs them up. The Calidus Temple, however, is a lot more about shape-shifting and deviant art. It's mostly a female-based one, or at least it seems to be, and this allows a lot Maybe. of body augmentation for certain individuals to be able to kind of transmorph themselves and infiltrate areas that are problems. These assassins will end up taking missions that take- Oh, they have the hairstyle. The bald head with that hair. Or maybe this is a bodysuit and there's actually hair underneath. So everything is maybe it's just not bald. Maybe there's hair under there. It goes out the bodysuit. Is this a bodysuit? Probably. Them years, two, three years to infiltrate a heretical group and slowly work their way up just to get enough time to put a bullet into the main target's head and then escape unharmed. It's a bodysuit become the main target and sabotage it from within. These are all completely about deception, mind tricks, polymorphing, and everything in between. Polymorphing. And, uh, lots of drawings. Ooh, of drawings. but the I can understand. Temple. Dude, I can understand why there's gonna be so much fan art of this though. Because if this is an official art of the hobby, I will just kind of call Warhammer a hobby. I don't know what to call it. Is it a game, a hobby, uh, a religion? If this is the official art of this religion, Warhammer 40k, of course it's gonna get a lot of fan art. Let's see to that but again. Into the main target's head and then escape unharmed. Or become... 
Hum Oops. the main topic. Where was Mind the bike? tricks, polymorphing, and everything in between. And uh, lots of drugs. Oh my god, look at that, bro! Oh shit. Hello, Chico. It's a hobby. Yes, it's a hobby. Warhammer 40k is a hobby. Okay, now I know. I've heard of the um, the tabletop. When I've been to I've been to magic shops before and there are people who play this game. That's all I know about it. It's a tabletop thing and they have figures, right? So I've seen it before. And I didn't understand it. <laughs> drawings. Lots of drawings. The Eversore Temple. I still don't understand it. Just kind of disturbing one. The Eversore Temple is about when you don't want anything to come back alive, friend or foe. You want it all dead. An Eversore is psychogenically conditioned. Psychogenic. With just... Oh, look at those nails, though. Yes. Yes, girl. Look at those nails. Psychotherapy and psychological torture to only feel violence, hatred, and anger. It does the clockwork oh. orange style of thing. Oh my Just god, dude. This part in the Clockwork Orange, have you watched Clockwork Orange? It, this part is so traumatizing, Jesus Christ. I don't know how they made this scene. It seems like they actually made the actor have, like, they, they actually pried open the actor's eyes. It was so traumatizing. Anyway, good show though. A good movie. Are you a soldier, me? No. Making you forced to watch never-ending pain and misery and, and psycho-conditioning, I guess is the term. And then they pump you full of tons of psychedelic drugs. Oh, drugs. And they cryo-freeze you. And then they drop you in an area where they just want to make sure everything is dead. And then you defrost, full of just all this insane, mind-boggling psychotherapy and, and psychedelic drugs. And you just go to town. That's a strange way to kill people, huh? Why don't they just assassinate them right away? They still pump them with drugs and keep them alive and then freeze them and then unfreeze them. That's so elaborate. Okay, yeah, sorry. If you, you don't care if anyone comes back alive. You're like, all right, lost cause. Send them in. Finally, there's the most bizarre temple, the Calexus Temple. Calexus. The Calexus assassins are feared even among the other temples. So that blank gene, the people will go to the Calexus Temple with this as well. And this is where they can harness that to be massively anti-psyker or even just anti-regular people. They are seen with extreme fear and uh, distrust among many, many people. They are described by the Eldar by quote as being pure evil. Who's Eldar? What is the Eldar? What? Imagine that uncomfortable feeling from that blank gene I mentioned, and then imagine them being taught and given equipment to amplify it by a hundred. If normally regular people feel uncomfortable, now they are basically akin to being a siren wailing directly in your ear. And if you're a psyker, Oh no, the sheer presence of a Klux assassin is enough for you to tear your skin off. You will rather gouge your eyes out and rip your nails off than even being near this person. The Klux assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds. And Wait a minute, pause, pause, pause. this person. The Klux assassin. Dude, look at that. Bulge. Bulge spotted. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Jenna. Starting to write English, then I realize we live in the same country. Hey! <laughs> oh no, I'm not Jenna, I'm just wearing a hat. I'm wearing a hat for this um, stream. Assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds, and they will go on their knees and ask you to gun them down because it is a suitable choice 
over being anywhere near you. The motto of that temple is, that which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. Now for the tabletop, assassins aren't that special. You can call them in no matter what Imperium faction you are. And they do a lot of work for themselves, but at the same time, they're very specialized. <laughs> the bulge, the, 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 and they work the, the bulge and this, the bulge and this uh, figures. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, fascinated. I'm getting distracted by the bulge and the shine of the bodysuits. Mm. Them too, though. You want to cause some distortion and weird stuff, you take a Calidus. You want to just murder swaths of infantry and then blow up Eversor. You want to kill that one guy, Vindicare, and if you have a lot of psychers, Caluxus. It's First thing I hear, bulge spotted. <laughs> Hello, Stepa. How are you doing? Welcome. <laughs> Stepa's with the timing suspicious. Oh, no. Oh, no. Stepa uh, records my stream. Don't do it. <laughs> that, that was pure coincidence. If we press the button neck, will it turn on? Secret. <laughs> the budge. <laughs> I cannot. Dude, if you look at it, see? They, they made that intentional. That that budge is prominent. You know what I mean? Oh my god. Also this guy. Well, this guy, not so much. So nice little, like, jack-of-all-trades if you have a specific thing you want to kill. And you get to choose which, which is really fun. But now, let's talk about the last human faction. We can round this video out before we do part two. The Inquisition. Inquisition! We have a lot to talk about with them. The Spanish Inquisition? The subject of heresy! Oh, boy. I can't unsee it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Dude, the bulge. You're gonna be drawn to it. Where do I even begin with the Inquisition? Take, take every secret police you can think of. Uh, the KGB, the Gestapo, the CIA, FBI, any of these kinds of people. And then mark it up by about 10. Oh, big boobies. And give them the most power big in nice. the entire Imperium. No, you know what? How about this? This, this right here, it's a, not just a quote. This is the imperial motto. The motto, motto. all right. The, the motto. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. Innocentia nihil probat. Innocence proves nothing. The most powerful organization in the Imperium. <laughs> the secret police, their number one motto is innocence proves nothing. The Inquisition goes around like- oh, This looks so cool though, this art. Reminds me of like Dark Souls of Bloodborne. It's probably just the hat and this part right here. It's like a... Also, it's all black. Maybe that's why the secret police or like detectives to find issues in the Imperium. And they have different Ordos depending on which one we're talking about. The Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Xenos, uh, the Ordo Malleus, for instance, and a whole bunch of other ones. Hereticus Tactical is obvious, neck. they do yes. heretics. Xenos tries to find alien threats and Malleus is demons. They all have different specializations in what they're trying to go for as this Inquisitor. And that's what they're called, Inquisitors. E so, I have a legit question. Is there anyone, any f faction in this whole thing that do not have big shoulder pads? <laughs> Every one of them have big shoulder pads. Oh, wait. Actually, I guess the assassins don't have shoulder pads. Oh, yeah, they don't. But most of them, it's like, what the fuck? It's all about the shoulder pads, dude. They're so protective of their shoulders. Is that the weak spot? The shoulders? Each of them, hmm. as an Inquisitor, has their own free reign to do as not. they wish. <laughs> they may have a ship and a crew, and they go out to find problems and interrogate people a lot. You need big shoulders to paint the difference in signas and logos. Ah. The costume is better than the black character earlier in mine. 
most of them have big shoulders okay so if you don't have big shoulders you cannot join these factions now it's a requirement to have big so shoulders soldiers shoulders you have to have big shoulders to be a soldier they should put that as a motto they should put how they should have a shirt like that you need big shoulders to have to be a soldier it's a tongue twister say that 10 times i don't wanna big shoulders to be a soldier you need to have big shoulders to have a soldier oh my to be a soldier i'm confused anyway let's they go are above let's, the let's law continue in every Move on. department i mean over space marines now the space marines might argue against them and stuff and there might be a lot of blowback but technically they are above them as inquisitors in they are looking to investigate and figure out coups and cults and demonic incursions and possible Xenos issues like gene stealers or a new gene uh, threat coming into an area. They're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work. And memes aside, they're pretty good at it. They soldiers of shoulders, yes. <laughs> soldiers of shoulders. They'll give you big shoulders if you don't have any. If you do not have big shoulders they will be provided to you mm. they're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work and memes aside they're pretty good at it the inquisition having all of this power does make them a little bit power hungry and frantic sometimes and yes it is still a bad thing but most of them are pretty good at their job and they spend a lot of time being very diligent to make sure that oh, all what the hairstyle they follow that's amazing are proper and correct they're basically space detectives with just enormous power and sometimes a bit of a power complex. And we haven't even talked about Exterminatus yet. Exterminatus. Exterminatus is deeming a planet unfit to be saved. I deem that this planet is demon infested and taking it back will cost too many resources and is not worth it. Wait, what if they just say it for personal reasons? I guess it doesn't matter because innocence proves nothing, right? So if somebody said, oh, this is a... Uh, and deemed to be saved you just believe me they, they just believe the inquisitors because like you don't question them right hmm i smell corruption i have now committed exterminatus on this planet i will now sign the death warrant of an entire imperium planet as it is unfit to take and better to be destroyed then allow the enemy to hold it. This can mean saturation bombardment. This can mean cracking the planet's core and breaking it apart. Doesn't matter. Render this planet inhospitable to all life. Yes, the innocence proves nothing people are the only people who can choose this planet must die. Oh, I said that. What he said. I said what he said. Oh my God. Big brain. They don't give a shit. <laughs> Gene stealers. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna steal your jeans, dude. Your pants. Oh no, you gotta hide your pants. The gene stealers. Exterminatus is rather rare. What? Because you do need a really good reason. Ah. In its entirety. Yeah. You're playing the villain. <laughs> now, it is memed a lot, but most Inquisitors are very rare to do Exterminatus. Oh, yeah, he said it as well. It's a crazy thing. There's only so many worlds that you don't want to destroy all of them. Uh, now, naturally, with the memes aside, there are some people who are a little bit rough on this one. <clears throat> <clears throat> but most Inquisitors generally don't like to do Exterminatus a ton, but it is an option they have. And it's a crazy option when you think about it. Secret Police Inquisition are unfortunately not represented on the tabletop very much. You generally kind of put one in your army if you feel like it. You have a couple special options there and some side content, but they're not really fleshed out very well. And personally, they need a lot more stuff put in there and they, they really need a lot more effort put into them. And they're not quite where I want them to mm -hmm. be. Overall, the Inquisition makes for a lot of the best storytelling as well, because it's a little bit hard to talk about a big story of a whole bunch of space Marines killing something, right? It's just a big battle story. It's not as interesting. Having that intrigue and that moral dilemma that an Inquisitor has makes for a lot better media. 
And honestly, the more people do it, I think it's better because then it adds a little more humanity to the Warhammer horrible, horrible grim darkness. And wow, we just finished the humans, all right? Come back for part two when we talk about Chaos and Xenos because we got to talk about the four Chaos Gods and all the- Yes! Dude, I want to see the fourth Chaos God that he was showing earlier. The Chaos Gods, yes, I'm interested in that. Chaos Marine Legions and the Tau and the Necrons and the Orcs and oh boy, we got a lot. I'll see you in part two. I want to see the fourth Chaos God with the thick thighs. Where is it? He was talking about the demons, right? So the demons... Yes, over here. Hold on, I will show you the thick, the thick one. Part two. Like and subscribe for part two. Is someone who can witchcraft? If you want to see more, like and subscribe. And plans to help her. Not all of them are psychic. Where the hell is it? Very very powerful, and they leave. Oh my god, I cannot find it. Well, you know what I mean. I saw it, it's real. The thick thigh chaos god. Ooh. Hmm. Is it here? Come on, where is it? Like and subscribe. Thank you. I'm not a new one, by the way, if you didn't know. Hi, welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe. We're gonna do part two, probably. Are we? <laughs> Up to you. Google Slanesh. Oh, that is Slanesh. Oh, yes. This is the one that I saw. That's that's the one that I saw. Yes, yes, yes. This this one. Ooh, tell me more about Slanesh. Tell me more. <laughs> I don't care about heresy. I wanna see these. Ooh, mama. <laughs> Ah, uh, shit. I go to the dark side for thick thighs. Mm. My bet on Nurgle. Nurgle! I, I guess Nurgle would be a chaos believer. <laughs> no, I'm a thighs believer, okay? <laughs> I'm a thighs believer. Like and subscribe for more. Yes, indeed. I'm a Thais believer. I'm not a Chaos believer. I'm a Thais believer, okay? Because so far what I've seen is shoulders. This whole faction, Schmeckel, is all about the shoulders. Everyone has thick as shoulders. Shoulder pads, I mean. Shoulder pads. I think this one's pretty cool. Adeptus Mechanicus, the ones who made the, um, the ones who make the weapons and the schmeckles, I think they're pretty cool. Especially this art in particular, I like it. And also, no, n not that one, the Imperial Knights. Oh, it's such a small part of the video, but it's so cool. The idea that it's a big Gundam with a lot of people in it. Hmm, that's cool. What did, what did I learn today? Hmm. Um, I learned that the humans like big shoulders. <laughs> the soldiers of shoulders. That's what I learned from this video. And I already forgot most of the words that he said. What is it called? The Imperium. No, the, the place that they live in. It's not an Imperium. I don't know what it's called. I don't remember. 
You forgot already. I guess it's called the Imperium. And there's the Chaos. Okay, I remember that part. There's the Chaos, the Warp Schmeckles. Okay, I remember there's the Warp. And they gotta go to the Imperium. And they go through the Warp because it's like the Nether World to make a shortcut. And the Emperor is the Beacon. He's the lighthouse and they're like Phoot! teleport to, to that place and then all these uh factions work for the imperium because they work for the sons the primarchs wait there was a war in the beginning because nine of them turned against the emperor and i guess these people work for the nine remaining eh? like that hmm i guess so <laughs> close enough <laughs> it's not a place the imperium is an empire Millions of different worlds of humans so with Earth at the center. Oh, right, right. The Imperium. It's the Empire. It's the territory. Okay, okay, okay. Emperor of Bacon. I need to meet him. He's old. Yes, he's old. I don't think he's gonna give you Bacon. You know what I mean? I don't think he will give you bacon. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand. So this is about fighting the demons and stuff. And these are the units that you could use. Do you fight the demons all the time? Wait, if this is a tabletop game, do you fight demons all the time? Or do you fight other humans for example this guy he has his own army right and imagine if he's playing with another player another player has his own army so does the other player need to have demon army or does the other player also have human army you fight everyone oh of course <laughs> Fight everyone. Ay, ay, ay. Cool. Oh, these are the sons. Right, the Primarchs. I remember that one. You can have whatever you want. You can have any unit that you want. But, but I thought the point of this is to purge the heretics. You can have heretics by your side? Huh. What a weird hobby. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you can have whatever army. Alright, alright. Army, alright. So, the, the Primarchs who started the revolution in the beginning, are they dead already? Or is it not clear? Oh, maybe they're still alive. That's why there's still war going on. Hmm. Mm. Is that how it is? They were still alive. God, fight them. The bad ones are mostly still alive. Ah, I see. Do they side with Slanesh? The thick mummy chaos god. Is she actually thick? All the thighs are thick. Oh, there's a magic card. Herald of Slanesh. Oh yeah, they they made a collaboration with the Warhammer, Magic the Gathering. That one I know a little bit. Well, I don't know the full lore of Magic the Gathering, but that one I know how to play. 
Oh! Oh my. Maybe I shouldn't show that on uh, YouTube. What the hell is this? Minion? <laughs> That's disturbing. Slanesh devoted. <laughs> Some of them died for you to continue. Oh no. Continue the war, they can't finish for the future. Okay, okay. That's why there's still war. Because some of them are still alive. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. That was fun. Interesting, interesting. How long is the stream? I didn't even notice. One hour, 30 minutes. Cool. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you for watching. See you next time. We're gonna have more next time. Um, part two. He he said there's gonna be part two to this uh, um, Warhammer 40k faction explained. So we're gonna watch that next time. And this is he's gonna talk about uh, chaos gods. I'm interested in that. <laughs> heretical, but that's heretical. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remove the minion in my mind. Now you're gonna think about that minion when you sleep. Uh, hope you enjoy. Have fun. I'm Naga Noom. Noom out. Noom out, baby. Well, you can subscribe. Mm -hmm. See ya. Noom Noom. Noom out. This is the ending song. Wah! Ending song. We're gonna have more next time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ending song. See you later. Take care. Good night. Or have a good day. Whatever time it is for you. Happy time zone. Yes. See ya. Emotion! Oh no, you're late. I'm done. <laughs> well, this is gonna be a video, so you you can watch the uh, the vod. Ending song. Hope you're doing well. See you next time.